When you're investing in real estate, you want to make sure that you don't lose money, that you're making money. And the best way to do that is to run your business as a business. Now, I'll unpack that. And definitely at the very end of the video, I'm going to give you even more practical steps on how to run their, your business as a business. Now, as you're doing this, what you're realizing is you're buying a rental property and you want to make money in passive income. I suggest with all my students in the real estate wealth builders and everybody that listens to me, I'm going to tell you, try to shoot for $250 a month in passive income. That's the minimum. You could always get more. I have 30 plus properties that make me $250 as a minimum, if not 300, 400, or even $700 a month in passive income. In fact, I have one student who literally bought a duplex with $50,000 of his own money. Then he refinanced it, pulled his cash out. He's only into the property for $2,000 and he's making $700 a month in passive income. So, I mean, this was like a month ago. So you can literally, literally do this. And hey guys, Dustin Heiner here with Master Passive Income. And I wanna show you how you can quit that J-O-B, that just overbroke job by investing in real estate rental properties so you never ever have to work a job again. As you are thinking about investing in real estate, the first thing that you must, must, must do before you buy any piece of property is build the business first. Now you need to build the business first. And what that actually means is before you even buy a property or even consider buying or putting an offer, you already have your business built. Let me give you an example of what that looks like. And if you're going to start a convenience store, you're going to do it the right way by building the business first. You're not going to just open the doors and put a box of candy bars in there. What you're going to do is you're going to get the gondolas, the shelving units that are going to be where all the candy bars sit on. You're going to get the fountain machines. You're going to get the cold storage. You're going to get countertops, cash registers, employees, bank accounts, all that sort of stuff. You're going to build the entire business first before, get this, before you buy any inventory or put any inventory into the business. Same thing with real estate investing. What you need to do is you need to build the business first before you buy any properties. What that's going to look like is you're going to find an area of the country to invest. In fact, I love investing all over the country. My students in the real estate wealth builders community, they also invest all over the country. And building the business is finding property managers, realtors, contractors, inspectors, roofers, plumbers, electricians. You're finding every single person that's gonna work in your business that are gonna do the work as opposed to you finding after the fact. We wanna be proactive as opposed to reactive. And if you're finding the right property manager, the right realtors, right wholesalers, they're gonna do the work for you and you will literally not be working. They're gonna do all the work for you. And here's the great thing. You might be thinking, well, Dustin, how am I gonna pay for all these people? Well, I got you covered there. What is amazing is when you invest in real estate, everything is paid for and not by you. In fact, I don't pay my taxes. I don't pay my insurance. I don't pay my property managers. I don't pay any of that stuff. My tenants pay all of that. I literally don't pay a penny out of my own money, out of my own pocket. My tenants pay it. Remember, what you do is you figure out your expenses, your property manager, your taxes, your insurance, your uh, you know other fees, HOA, all that sort of stuff. You add up all those expenses. You make sure your income, your rents are higher than that. So that difference is your passive income that you make, like I said, always a minimum of $250 a month in passive income. Now, when you're building the business, you're gonna have people that are gonna help you to understand what is going right and what could potentially go wrong in your business. And I'm gonna give you a huge jump start into this. I wanna give you my real estate investing course absolutely for free. If you text the word rental to 33777, R-E-N-T-A-L to 33777, or if you go to masterpassiveincome.com forward slash free course, it's in the description, go ahead and check that out. I will literally send you my real estate investing course absolutely for free. It's gonna show you how to find an area of the country to invest in all over the country, no matter where you live, find properties, build the business first, do it right, quit your job because you have an automatic business making you money. I will show you how to do that. Get that for yourself right away so you can get started. The second thing that you must do as you're running your business, your real estate investing business, is to get multiple quotes on everything, two or three or four. I'll give you a quick example of how that looks. Now, if you're gonna get a rehab done on a property, you buy a house, you're gonna rehab it, and you have the first person come by and say, you know what, it's gonna cost $18,000 to fix it up. You're like, oh my goodness, that's a lot of money. I didn't think it was gonna be that much. Well, you get one or two other quotes. Now, you might get somebody else to say, well, you know, it's only gonna be about five or $6,000 to fix it up. Another person's about $10,000 to fix it up. So you have a wide range. We don't just go with the lowest one. We look at 
everything. And the third thing that you need to do is have other people find you properties. As we're building the business, we're finding wholesalers, we're finding realtors, multiple of wholesalers and realtors. We have, we probably talk to other investors, talk to property managers. Let everybody know that you're in the market to buy rental properties. Let them know. And what you do is you then have them do the work. I kid you not, when I buy a property, it takes me about three hours of my own personal time. Like literally, Three hours, just three hours of my personal time. Now it takes a lot more time because I have other people do the work, but of my own little physical work, literally, it's only three hours. I wake up in the morning, I'm drinking my coffee, I open up my email account and I say, oh, hey, this wholesaler sent me a property, let me check it out. Or hey, this realtor sent me a list of properties, let me check that one out. Or this property manager sent me a property that they are thinking about selling or they have an investor that's selling. I get all these properties from other people, they do all the work, and while I'm sleeping and I'm drinking coffee and then checking on the property and then wiring the money, signing papers, all that sort of stuff, just two or three hours of my own personal time because I'm having other people do the work. And a huge pro tip I'm absolutely gonna give you is that, and I already said this just a second ago, you must get wholesalers. I gotta hammer home this point. I personally love wholesalers. I bought many properties from wholesalers. You might be thinking, well, you know, a wholesaler brings me a property, I'm gonna pay, have to pay him like two or three or $4,000 just to get the deal. Like, well, if the deal works, if it makes you money in passive income, it hits that $250 minimum, and you're gonna get capture that equity. If it's a good property, it's a good deal, what does it matter? You're already gonna be paying money to a realtor or something like that. Why not buy it from a wholesaler? Wholesalers work really hard. They find the seller and the buyer and they put them together. So what I suggest is getting wholesalers and having them do the work. That is a big pro tip I'm gonna give you. And I personally keep my money in the Life Goals Home Down Payment ETF. Saving your down payment at a bank yielding 0% while home prices are going up in double digits, you're getting crushed by home price inflation. Check out conservatively managed Life Goals Home Down Payment ETF. The ticker symbol's HOM. No lockup, no minimum, no attempts to keep place with price inflation. And oh yeah, you get a 2% dividend every single month. I love getting my dividends every single month. I just put it right back in HOM. So full disclosure, I invest in that as well. And the next thing you must do, in fact, the fourth thing that you must do is have business processes and business rules in your business. Every single one of my property managers, I tell them how to manage my properties. They might manage their properties differently for other investors, but how you manage my properties is exactly what I'm gonna tell you. Now here's, I'll give you a quick example because there's many other things you gotta tell them. One quick example is you tell them, your property manager, rent is due on the first. It's late after the third. On the fourth, you put a three day notice if they haven't paid. And if they pay during that time, then you get a late fee if it's after the third. And three days after that three day notice is finished and it's now legal for you to actually go through the eviction process. If they haven't paid you, you literally go through the eviction process because you're running your business as a business. You're making sure that you are not getting taken advantage of. I, when I first got started, I was listening to every sob story and being okay with the sob stories. It's not good. In fact, some people are lying. It's sad to say. And I had many, many people lie to me. A lot of people telling the truth too, but I couldn't figure out which one's which. Like, are you lying or are you telling the truth? So instead I made everything as specific as possible so that property managers knew exactly what to do on every single day. And you wanna build the business first. On top of that, have those business processes in place so that your property managers know exactly how to do it and they don't deviate from it, they stick to your schedule. And the fifth thing that you must do is hire slow, but fire fast. Hire slow and fire fast. I learned the hard way and I had somebody steal a lot of money from me. Let me share with you exactly how that looks. If you're gonna hire slow, you're gonna hire a property manager for your property and you're gonna interview them over maybe one or two weeks. Like you're not gonna just call, hey property manager, oh, you're alive? Let me have you manage my property. Thank you, bye, click. No, you don't do that. You actually talk to them many, many times. You make sure that you're hiring slow, that number one, they're good at communication, that they're trustworthy, that they know what they're talking about, that they don't sound scatterbrained or all that sort of stuff. You wanna make sure that they are actually gonna be able to run your business well and do your business right. Now, when I say fire fast, if you find out that somebody's stealing from you or even have the thought that somebody's stealing from you, fire them fast. My property manager, my very first one that I hired, 
After about six months, she started stealing from me. She's like, ah, this guy from California, he has no clue what he's doing. Let me just start stealing from him. I started getting receipts or random receipts, like handwritten receipts that looked like her handwriting sent to me on certain things, $1,000 here, $500 there. And I realized that, well, on top of that, not just receipts, but even the statement had things that didn't have receipts to them. Like, this is just not right. Turns out she started another business, like a Subway sandwich business, and that was losing money. So she was stealing from me, putting it into her business. Long story short, I fired her right away. So you wanna hire slow and fire fast. And the sixth thing that you need to do is you need to manage your property managers. Don't just take everything that your property manager says and say, go ahead, do what you think is best. Do not do that. In fact, you need to double and triple check everything. Now, let me give you a huge example. If I were to spend your money, do you think I would care as much about your money as you do? No, I don't because it's not my money. I didn't work hard for this money. I'm like, ah, we can spend, you know, 10% more just because, you know, let's just get it done. No, and that's what your property managers tend to think. They don't want to, it's not like that's their goal. It just comes out, it's human nature. Like, ah, you know, it's $14,000. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. No, get three more quotes on that. I'm not gonna pay $14,000. I wanna make sure I have the right work done. I have many property managers that come back to me and say, hey, we got one quote and here's the quote for $3,000 to get this fixed. I'm like, where are the other two? Like, you know, business process. Here's another business process. You get three quotes on anything that's over $1,000 in repairs. I'm not, don't come to me with just one quote because I'm gonna say no. Get me two other quotes so I have three total quotes so I can see how much they're gonna charge but also the scope of work. I wanna make sure that they, number one, have a good price but number two, that the scope of work, that they're not overdoing the house or they're fixing up something that they don't need to do or should not do. And as you are building your business and you're doing it right, you run your business like this, you're gonna be successful. You guys, if you got anything out of this, I would appreciate if you smash that like button and also subscribe and hit the notification bell. I'm giving out so much great information on how to invest in real estate. And don't forget to watch this video right here. We'll see you in the next one.